This here is a flexible AMOLED phone screen. Now, have I made a folding iPhone with this? N not yet. <laughs> I'm playing some dirty tricks to make iOS show up on here. It is live and connected to a real iPhone, but not everything is quite as it appears. However, this is super cool technology and I think there are some real possibilities. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. Let's take a closer look at this thing. Rumor has it that Apple's been working on a folding iPhone, but it's likely still quite a ways off. However, ever since the Galaxy Fold came out, I've been wondering, is it possible for me to make my own folding iPhone? Could I take apart a fold and use the screen from that? Or could I buy a screen? And it was mostly just this idea that was bouncing around in the back of my head for, gosh, over a year or two now. But recently, a friend of mine, Timon, sent me a link to an AliExpress shop that had some flexible screens for sale. And so, of course, I had to buy some and test them out. This first screen is the one that I showed at the beginning. Uh, it's quite flexible and very thin. It's only about 0.3 millimeters thick, which is roughly three sheets of paper. The resolution is 1080 by 2160, which is pretty good. Now, this is the second screen. Uh, and let me, let me get that plugged in here. So you'll notice right away that the colors are a lot richer, the blacks are blacker. Uh, however, this screen is far more rigid. It's also a lot more thick, um, and it has kind of some built-in curves which add further rigidity. However, <laughs> if you turn this screen over, and we look at the back of this one side by side, you'll notice they look very similar. And I think these screens are actually the same screen, except for this piece right here, which is an added on digitizer for this screen. Now the digitizer is the piece of electronics that registers your touches on the screen. I don't think this screen has a digitizer. Obviously this is not populated here. However, there are a couple pins up here, a couple traces up here on the screen itself that don't have anything connected to them. So it's possible that those are a, a digitizer built into the screen itself. In true Shenzhen fashion, I don't have the data sheets for either one of these screens. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. They do come with data sheets, but they don't even list the original manufacturer. I had to figure that out for myself by peeling up black tape that was covering some of the markings on here. Uh, I believe these screens are manufactured by a Chinese display manufacturer called BOE, and I believe they're discontinued. Um, so these screens are probably either factory seconds or they were leftovers from some manufacturing run of a phone or something. As far as how I'm driving these screens, they came with this adapter board for HDMI. So you plug in HDMI and then it runs the screen. Uh, and for testing, I've got it plugged into a Raspberry Pi 4, which is running a piece of software called RPi Play, which imitates the, the AirPlay protocol. And then I've got this iPhone doing screen mirroring over Wi-Fi to the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which then drives the screen via HDMI. And so that's the dirty tricks that I was talking about at the beginning. Uh, but, but I really wanted to see what a flexible screen would look like with iOS on it before I did all of the hard engineering work to, to hook them up directly. The other thing <laughs> to point out is that these screens are quite fragile. Uh, which is, shouldn't be a surprise to you if you've been following the whole Galaxy Fold thing. Uh, but this screen in particular has a bit of damage up here in the corner. Far worse than that is uh, this screen, which was damaged while shooting. And uh, well, let, me, let me just let you see for yourself. This here is a flexible AMOLED phone screen. Uh oh. That I may have just broken. This was a pretty expensive mistake, both in terms of money and time. Each of those screens cost me about $500, and uh, I had to wait a couple weeks to get a new one shipped from China. The one small silver lining is that I found a Taobao seller who was willing to sell them to me for about $250 a piece, so it wasn't quite as expensive a mistake as it could have been. So, what's involved in trying to make my own folding iPhone? First. I gotta find a screen that's both flexible enough and has a built-in digitizer, which I haven't found yet. <laughs> Second, I need to figure out how to get the iPhone logic board to talk to the display. And the good news there is that they both likely speak the same protocol, which is MIPI DSI. Now, MIPI stands for Mobile Industry Processor Interface, which is a collection of standards. 
And DSi stands for Display Serial Interface, which is specifically for screens and displays, and it's used in most phones and tablets. However, <laughs> the bad news is that while MIPI is technically an open standard, you really gotta be a big company with a lot of money and sign lots of NDAs to even get access to the doc documentation about how it works. And not only that, but unlike HDMI, where you can reasonably expect to just plug a random display into a random device and have them more or less work, that's not the case with MIPI. Uh, MIPI defines how the data is sent between the phone and the screen, but it doesn't even define a standard connector, let alone a full set of commands for, for configuring the display. So the notion that you could just plug a random display into a phone and have it send all the right configuration and data such that an image shows up correctly, it's not very realistic. And the idea that I could just pop off an iPhone screen and swap it out for a flex screen, uh, it's not that simple, not at all. I definitely need to make some sort of adapter board to go between the screen and the iPhone logic board. And I don't have good open documentation on either side. Uh, I don't have good data sheets for any of the screens that describe what configuration commands to send them. And iOS is closed source, so trying to modify it to get it to send the right configuration commands, even if I knew what they were, might be a next to impossible task. And not only that, I'd still have to design the physical phone shell itself with hinges and other protections to make sure the, the screen doesn't break when it's folded and unfolded, um, similar to what's been happening with the Samsung Galaxy Folds. So. Am I going to build a folding iPhone? I don't know. Uh, I have started work with a friend of mine who's a far better hardware hacker than I am on figuring out some of the preliminary steps to see if this is possible. So we'll see. Uh, we might beat Apple to the punch and have the first folding iPhone. I don't know. Stay tuned. Real quick before you go, I have a few updates on strange parts. Yes, it has been quite a while since I posted a video, but I've been busy this whole time. I have a new shop, I've started a new channel, and now we have a Strange Parts Discord. So first off, I started a second channel for all the things that don't make it into Strange Parts videos, which is actually quite a lot, and it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I'm gonna be posting a tour of the new shop in the next few days, so make sure to either click up here or down in the description and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss that. Uh, I also want to take apart the screen that I broke when I was shooting this video and look at it under the microscope. So I'll probably be posting a, a teardown video on the second channel in like the next week or two or so. Second, there is now a Strange Parts Discord and you can find an invite link to that down in the description. I hang out there pretty much every day and we've got a really nice group of like-minded folks there. So uh, everybody is welcome. And then lastly, would you do me a huge favor? Can you take a few minutes and fill out a survey. Uh, it'll help me better understand who you are and what sort of things you like so that uh, not only I can better steer the direction of Strange Parts, but also so that I can convince sponsors to help me make more awesome videos. Uh, there's a link up here and down in the description. Thank you in advance for, for taking the time to do that. I, I can't tell you how helpful it is. And with that, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and that you've weathered 2020 as best you can. It was definitely a rough year for me, and I, I finally feel like I'm seeing the light on the other side. Uh, I've got a bunch more ambitious projects coming up and a bunch more videos on the way, so I'll see you again soon. Take care.